You see, the electrosmog that's thrown off is not just microwave, it's not just electromagnetic. Much, much more important is the scalar aspect. Now, this is something not much talked about because for a long time it was thought that scalar waves would have no interest. When James Clerk Maxwell, the great Scottish physicist, wrote the equations describing the electromagnetic spectrum in the 19th century, he wrote 24 equations. And the bulk of them deal with scalar waves. Then nobody knew what they were for, why they were there, and so they were just ignored. And if you go to university to learn electronic engineering or electrical engineering or whatever, you were taught eight of Maxwell's equations. The rest ignored. A little less than 30 years ago, biophysicists discovered that the belief that the human body's internal communication and control systems were propagated by electrical waves is not true. They're actually propagated by scalar waves because they're much, much faster than electrical waves. There was always this quandary, well, if information is propagated by electrical waves, how does it get there faster than electricity can be propagated? And the answer is because it doesn't use electricity, it uses scalar structures. Now, because scalar waves were ignored in creating electronic gadgets, they form the greater part of the wild, chaotic electron bundles that are thrown off from any electrical device. You begin to get, see what's happening now. Any electrical device, including any electrical cable, will throw off a considerable amount, some more than others of course, of chaotic scalar waves. And these chaotic scalar waves go into your body and start screwing up your body's internal communication system. You see what's happening? Now, you put one of these next to your brain and start pumping chaos into it 10 hours a day, okay, two hours a day. What's gonna happen? You're gonna get a head full of chaos which means that you're going to have problems thinking, you're going to have problems remembering. You know these symptoms? Familiar? You're also going to have problems with the cell structure, which is why the long-term usage of a mobile phone or a cell phone increases your chance of brain cancer by 280%. But this is just a small part of the problem. This is just the bit that we've noticed. The real problem is the electricity itself. It's the electricity in the cables in your home. It's the electricity which is used to propagate radio and television waves. It's the electricity in the electronics in your car. We're constantly being bombarded by the results of chaotic electricity from all possible directions. And this is why so many people have problems with it. Even people who never ever take one of these into their hand. And that's the problem that I'm going to address. It should be obvious from the first film that we need to do several things. 
not just one. We need to stop the generation of electrosmog from our cell mobile and cordless phones because we're sticking them right next to our brain. Now, there is one thing which I must comment upon here. This concept that by attaching a Bluetooth device to your ear and leaving your phone in your pocket, you're getting some sort of health benefit is nonsense. All you're doing is removing the cancer forming information from your brain and adding it to your intestines, as a great many people have discovered to their cost, some at the cost of their lives. You've got to stop the generation of electrosmog. That's what you need to do. And not just in the phones, you need to stop the creation of electrosmog in your home. That's the second stage. The third stage, we need to stop the generation of wild scalar radiation from the mobile phone towers, from radio and television transmitters. And lastly, this is a very long term project, we need to change the way in which we create and manage electricity so that we have an ordered system. And just show how much difference this makes. Up to 97% of the electricity which is generated gets thrown away as waste. Think about that. Of the electricity which is generated, which you pay for, you actually use around 3% of it. Is that a good idea?